Hey everybody, welcome back. I know, goodness gracious. So if you are with me on my other podcast, you already know the deal. But for those of you who aren't, let me just bring you up to speed. So all last week, I was traveling for work. And um, you know, we, this time, this around this time every summer is when we prep for our fall sessions and season. And so, you know, there's lots of meetings, there's a meeting with judges and attorneys, you know, getting, you know, acquainted with all the new ones and blah, 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 blah. And um, so, and then you're constantly eating. I mean, I was thinking when I was uh, traveling, I thought, we are so spoiled as Americans. Every meeting, not every meeting, but after every, just about every meeting, we got to go get something to eat. Let me tell you something. I acted a fool. I ate all kinds of stuff. I generally, in my day-to-day life, when I'm at home, when I have control over my diet, I generally don't eat gluten. I generally don't eat dairy, but child, I had all kinds of stuff. And so, because you know, you're out with people and you don't want to be like, is that gluten free? You know, you just want to make sure everyone, especially when it's not like a group of intimate friendships where you could do that or you feel comfortable doing that. Um, and I don't have any, you know, allergies or anything in particular. So I knew I was, it wasn't going to hurt me or whatever. And so when I got back home, girl, I slept for two days, almost two days straight, but, uh, my body was like, you acted a fool for a whole week. <laughs> now it's time to pay for it. So like I was in a coma from all the bread cause I, in my day-to-day life, I don't really have bread sometimes because babe likes Ezekiel bread. Sometimes I'll have that, you know, but it's like very sparingly, maybe like once every few months or whatever. So there you have it. And not to mention, I was not able to watch the show last week for some reason. And I said, maybe this is what my listeners were talking about for some reason where I was, they did not have ABC as a part of their channel package at the hotel because anytime I'm going to be in a hotel for like a a solid week, I like to preset some channels. Um, and I was like, wow, I I don't even, I can't even find the show. Um, and so of course I could listen to the podcast, but you know, I was in a different time zone. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to skip this week of shows. So I, um, don't know what happened last week. And I'll be very honest with you with all the stuff going on. It's not important to me to know, but since I've been home, I've been able to course watch this week's shows and I'm going to talk a little bit about this week's shows uh, not just today in particular so that's why this episode is a little bit longer so I gotta tell y'all something I you know a lot of you who've been with me for a while you saw the switch in my commentary about Senator Elizabeth Warren there was a time when I really had a lot of respect for Elizabeth Warren But when it was revealed, what was it, seven years ago now, maybe eight, I can't remember, that she had been purposefully deceptive all these years about being um, partly Native American, I've never seen her the same. Now, for if you're one of my listeners and you are white, or I should say, you are non-black. You may not understand the things I'm about to say. And so I'm going to ask you to try, if you can, be sensitive to what I'm going to say. So let me explain to you why my feelings have changed. See, you're looking at Elizabeth Warren today. But when Elizabeth Warren was going around purposefully misleading people about being part Native American and she was getting all these grants to get into law school and these scholarships. And she was taking advantage of affirmative action based on the fact that she was saying she was partly Native American. You got to think about the time period when this was happening. This was a time period in our country when it was very, very difficult for black and brown folks, particularly black folks, because we were coming out of Jim Crow legalized segregation. There were so many things. We were still fighting just to be acknowledged. My four mothers and forefathers were still fighting just to be acknowledged as a human being and treated decently. That's why there had to be laws like affirmative action. You had to force people, force businesses, institutions to treat you like everybody else. And try to give you a fair shake like they gave everybody else. So when this lady was taking advantage of those programs, 
this was what was happening in our country. Now we're all grown and all of us are emotionally mature enough to know the difference between a mistake, a bad decision and a willful, willfully deceptive act. That ain't no mistake, baby. And that ain't no bad decision. That was a willfully deceptive act because Elizabeth knew that she had one, 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 not 1.2, not 2.5, one relative going back over four generations who was Native American. And we don't even know if that person was full blooded Native American because she won't ever talk about it, which is highly suspicious. And it wasn't up until she was running for president of the United States, which she was still claiming to be partly Native American and trying to associate herself with this particular tribe, that when Donald Trump started making fun of her, calling her Pocahontas, and then people began to say, wait a minute, that's right, this woman probably has no Native American in her, and she was forced to do the DNA test, and it was re- revealed that it was zero 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 point one. it's like... How dare you? And then she apologized. She even called and reached out to the leader of that particular tribe and apologized to him. But that guy was right. I can't remember his name, but he said, what's the point in an apology now when you've already benefited from your lies for decades and not just you, your children benefited because on their applications for all of their scholarships and all of their free rides, they put on there that their mother was part Native American and that they were part Native American, which was all a blatant lie. It was a willfully deceptive act. Now, when she was doing all that, there were real Native American men and women fighting for fair shakes. But then you have people that clogged up the system like Elizabeth Warren. And you've heard Sonny talk about this this, uh, particular fact, and you can look it up yourself. It is a well-known fact. I believe it comes out of Pew Research that the majority of people who benefited from programs like affirmative action were white folks. They weren't black folks and other people of color. There were folks like her. Now, I'm a big believer when people show you who they are, you believe them the first time. The first time. Now, I'm not a believer in holding a grudge, but I am a believer in not forgetting a person's character once they've showed it to you. And remember, at her big ripe age, she was still carrying on this lie up until she was forced to reveal it was a lie. And then it's almost, I'm so sorry, but it's like, lady, you took something away from people who desperately needed it. When you, at that time, and you still do have white privilege, Why did you need to claim being part Native American to get anything? No, you want to take advantage of it because you didn't like it anyway. And I could go on and on and go deeper and deeper, but I won't because my audience is diverse and the podcast is mine. And so I decide how I'm going to handle these things. So at the end of the day, I'm not trying to hear nothing that woman got to say about nothing. So you see, I um, have long since learned when I was an investigative interviewer, you got to go past what people look like. You got to go past what they sound like to know what their character is. So we still live in a society, even though all of us know we should never do these things. There are some people who still do this. If a person sounds nice, they think they're nice. See, Elizabeth sounds nice, so people think she's a nice person. She looks like a regular old person who would never do harm to anybody. So people then assume based on her looks and her or her or her accomplishments, her law degree, her this, her that, that, oh, you know, see, people make character assessments based on stuff that don't mean nothing. No, your character was revealed, Elizabeth Warren, when you willfully deceive people for decades And you took rightful things from people who were fighting just to be acknowledged. And you didn't even need it. So ever since that revelation came out, I've never looked at her the same. And I will never look look at her the same. And I I couldn't believe it. And when I read what that leader of that tribe said, I thought he's absolutely right. Where's the restitution, Elizabeth? Well, I can't make no restitution. Yeah, because like he said, you've already benefited from your lies all this time. (laughs) 
And that's just the stuff we know you got. We don't even know the other stuff that you may have gotten for your family based on the lie that you were part Native American. So I don't know why they kept her on there for two segments. I'm like, child, please. Okay. So when Elizabeth was talking, I was, I was listening, but not listening. I was doing something else. So that's how I felt about that portion of the show. I just think she's a disrespectful person. I think she is a, I think she's a a badly flawed woman. And so, yeah, of course, my favorite part of the show was Shaq. (laughs) Did y'all see Sarah? I was like, Sarah can't contain herself. Um, Now, I got to tell y'all something. When I was, I guess, 17 or 18, I really thought I was going to marry Shaquille O'Neal. I plotted this all out. You know, he was in his senior year um, at LSU. I mean, I had it all plotted and planned. I used to call myself Shelly O'Neal, you know, like I would literally move my dad's last name out the way and put O'Neal. My parents who who supported me in my delusion, (laughs) they didn't, they they would never call me Shelly O'Neal. So they didn't take it that far, but They knew I was in love. They knew I really liked him. You know, they thought I was infatuated with him. And so if I was in the kitchen uh, washing dishes or something and he was doing an interview, my dad would call me in and, Shelly, Shaq's on Channel 12. You better hurry up and get in here. (laughs) So they just made me believe the dream I had was true, too. And I can't tell you how many stories I have about plots and plans that things I did to try to meet this man. So when I saw him today, it, it brought back a lot of fun memories, you know. Because we're all much older now, you know. Um, But Shaq has one of the most charismatic personalities out there. He's very charming. It really wasn't until um, I have a family member who was born a very charming person. Now, I will tell y'all, before my family member, I never really believed that charm could be a gift like that. You know, like some people are born, they know how to draw. They never learn. They just knew. It's like a natural gifting from God, they say. Or some people are great at math. It's like a natural gift. Or they can fix cars. They were just really great. Charm is also a natural gift. My my, uh, family member was born, like, from the time this person was very little. I mean, like, very little. They were very charming. And so, um, of course, now his parents had to help shape that because you can misuse charm, you know. Um, but he's like just a natural salesman. Like everybody likes him from the time he was little, everybody. And so Shaq has one of those kind of personalities. He's very charming. He's effusive. He's charismatic. He's pleasant. He's gentlemanly. Um, all those things, uh, of course, coupled with his height, you know, and I mean, what woman don't love a tall man. Right. Um, but I was like, so I thought, is Sarah going to just have an orgasm right there on the set? Like, what is going on, Sarah? Calm down, girl. Calm. Did y'all see how Whoopi was looking at Sarah? Like, what is going on? Like, calm. Like, what is going on over here, Sarah? But anyway. So, yeah. So, that was a fun segment. You know, I had actually, I don't know about you guys, but I had never heard that rumor. But I did look it up after the show. And I was like, oh. Now, he kept saying that this rumor that he kicked Joy out of this, his restaurant, which is called, um, I think it's called big chicken. Um, he has, it started in Las Vegas. He's, I think his first restaurant was in Vegas, but he has now restaurants and it's not just that one. He has multiple franchises of different restaurants all across the country and actually outside the U S as well. A lot of, you know, Shaq went back to college and finished. He got his business degree, um, his master's degree. Uh, this was about 10 or 15 years ago. Um, because he really wanted to, you know, sustain the wealth that he made in the NBA. You know, a lot of these NBA players, not just NBA, but hockey players, a lot of these baseball players, these folks die broke y'all because once they get out of the game, the money stops flowing unless you're going to be like an analyst or, you know, like, um, you know, you, you have the ability to get one of these TV jobs, but yeah. So, um, but he went back to college and he got his master's degree in business and, that's when he started opening, you know, uh, buying up a lot of restaurants and things like that. So, but I had never heard that rumor before, but when I looked it up, it did originate on a satirical website. Why they picked Shaq and Joy is very interesting. And that's an interesting combination, but I liked <laughs> how he kissed her hand today. And like I said, he's just very charming. Um, and I'm sure he smelled really good too. 
I know y'all saw when Sunny just, I'm like, girl, if you don't sit down, <laughs> saw Sunny popped out of her seat, girl. Listen, she didn't even wait for the man to get over there to her. Okay. She just jumped out of that seat. I'm like, okay, Miss, Miss repressed Catholic. Right. Um, but yeah, but he's just really pleasant. And, um, that was a good show. That was a good segment. <laughs> Um, you know, now let's talk about the heavy stuff. I want to save the heavy stuff for last. So y'all listen, I have an excellent podcast episode coming, um, in a couple of days. Maybe I'll be able to have it up by tomorrow. I'm not sure. Um, I finally found out why the view has not had Dr. Bandy Lee on. I actually heard it from her own mouth. Now, she didn't mention The View, but she did talk about TV programs and she gave the explanation of why she hasn't been on these programs. And um, a lot of you know that I found Dr. Bandy Lee's work about six and a half years ago. Would to God I found it before then, because you guys heard my story about the disastrous voting decision I made. Um, But when I found her work, The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, I have been following her ever since. Like I am subscribed to her Substack. Um, which for those of you who may not know, maybe you live outside the U.S. Substack is kind of like a newsletter. Uh, a lot of people have a Substack, um, but a lot of professional people have Substacks and you have to support their work, you know, so you have to pay, you know, some things are free, but not everything is free. And there are some people I don't mind supporting because of the work that they're doing. And it's only a little bit of money, you know, here or there. Um, but I've been following her work since <clears throat> any interview she does. Well, I shouldn't exaggerate, not any interview, but I will say about 85% of the interviews that she does, which is normally with independent media now, because, you know, she's not going to be on these big time networks like ABC. I will watch them. I will, um, when I'm cooking, folding the laundry because her, she's brilliant. Bandy Exley, a lot of, you know, she lost her job at Yale. Um, when she decided to come out and warn the American public about the dangers of Donald Trump, about his mental psychosis, and that the, his psychosis would spread because mental symptoms spread just like viruses spread. And at any rate, um, I've been following her, you know, in the, this, what they're calling, and I'm, 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 I'm phrasing it like this, y'all, because until I know everything, meaning, The investigation is all over. I'm going to continue to say what people are calling an attempted assassination, excuse me, an attempt to assassinate former president. I'm not going to call it that until we have all the facts. And right now we have very few facts. Um, She wrote an excellent sub stack about it because people were reaching out to her and wanting to know, because remember, Dr. Bandy Lee predicted before he was elected president that he would bring about widespread violence in the United States of America. And um, so it was, you know, people wanted to know, what does she have to say about this? You know, I mean, heck, her and her esteemed colleagues, they predicted January 6th before January 6th even happened. And um, so, so many things they've been right on. You know, for those of us who are Christians, I want to say something. You know, prophets don't always come in the form of wearing um, an angelic dress or suit, Um, A lot of times I find people are looking for people who have the answer, who can predict the future. When there are scientists, men and women, who are experts in their field, because these things, I mean, when people have a certain type of psychosis, you can predict what they're going to do. Dr. Bandy Lee, for me, is, is what I consider a modern day prophet. God is a scientist. You can look at nature and tell God is a scientist. Have you ever seen a rainbow? And when you learn about how these gases form these beautiful colors, right? So I believe in science and I believe in scientists. And a lot of you know, I love the social science sciences. So I've been following her for all these years. And it's very interesting. I was reading her Substack about this alleged assassination attempt and what she had to say was very interesting. If you'd like to hear about it or read it, um, you can just put in her name, B-A-N-D-Y-L-E-E-X, Bandy Exley. Um, 
and Substack in Google and it'll, it'll come up for you. <clears throat> now, she may have put it behind a paywall at this point. I don't know. But when I was reading it, it was free. But if you subscribe, certain things are free and then some things you still have to pay for. So <clears throat> I say all that to say when they were talking about today, Nikki Haley flip flopping, I was like, why? Do they, do they not understand that this is widespread psychosis? That that man's mental symptoms have spread? And so there's no, there's, no, there's no rationalization that you can have with someone who's mentally ill. There's no rational con, con, conversation, you can, conversation excuse me, you can have with people who are a part of a cult. You have to, um, that you have to use other tactics. You cannot shame them and talk about how dumb they are and how stupid they are and when they're, are they going to wake up. So let's take a listen because the show has been off for several hours. Let's take a listen of how Whoopi introduced this whole Nikki Haley flip-flopping mess. Hello, hello, welcome to The View, y'all. Welcome to The View. So the most anticipated speaker at last night's RNC was Nikki Haley, who was one of... The Republican nominee's most vocal critics when she challenged him during the primaries. Take a look. But she had a big change of heart when she took the stage last night. Take a look. Yeah, and you know, when they played that that clip, I was like, wow. But Joy had one word, and I totally agree with her. Pathetic. Yeah, well, actually, she had more than one word, but... Yeah, I mean, I would, I just encourage anybody listening to the sound of my voice, turn off the talking heads, turn on the experts like Dr. Bandy Lee. You know, as a Christian, the Bible tells me knowledge is power, but it also tells me people perish for the lack of knowledge. I have found, and I'm just speaking about my own experience, not just with this whole Trump mess, but anything in life. Once I understand what's going on, there's no more fear. Fear dissipates. Anxiety goes away. I feel more prepared to take on the challenge because I have the knowledge, the knowing I understand what's happening I will be forever grateful and I have no problem supporting Dr. Bandy Lee financially, her work that she does because these people don't get, they don't get paid a lot of money. You know, when you are, um, when you lost your job behind trying to tell the truth, right? I will be forever. I am forever grateful because to her, because her work has given me understanding of what's happening in this world in terms of Trump and MAGA and the supporters. And I will tell you guys, I have no fear. I have no anxiety. I have none of that. And it has made things easier. It has made it easier for me when I hear or read news to put it in its proper perspective. And so people like Dr. Bandy X Lee, they are, she has risen up in a time where she, her expertise is needed. And it's not just Dr. Bandy Lee. There are others Um, But for me, you know, she is one that sound that that when it was, I'm I'm trying to say I was going to use a biblical reference, but I won't because many of you may not, um, you know, understand the the correlation. I don't mean understand because you don't understand. I mean, understand because you may not be of Christian faith. And so um, it may not make much sense. But at the end of the day. I wish that she could be on our show, but I understand now after watching a couple of her latest interviews that she's never going to be on our show. Um, and that's just the way that it is. And so 
watching them have these conversations constantly about like um, the other day when they were talking about the alleged assassination attempt, Sarah was like, maybe this will be the thing that turns him around. It's like, Sarah, have you read the dangerous case of Donald Trump or listened to it on audible? Have you listened to her other two books since? Have you even watched any of her interviews? She is a forensic psychiatrist and a psychologist. She specialized in violence. She worked with gangs and all kinds of these dangerous people for over 25 years. People like that, like Donald Trump, they don't have a conscience. Now, for those of us who are Christians, the Bible talks about there are people who have a seared conscience. When you sear something off, there's no feeling. So then expecting an alleged assassination attempt, you know, whatever, to turn, make this person feel something, it's just never going to happen. I mean, they're trying to deal with something that's um, a medical issue with rational, with rationale, and it, it just doesn't work. It's like, None of these conversations make any sense to me now having the backdrop of the information from the expert, Dr. Bandy Lee. It's like these are futile conversations. And if she were to be allowed to be on the program, um, you know, a lot of you know, I was. um, I was heavily saying. Season 2026. That she needed to be on there at least once a week because there was stuff happening like on the daily. So there need to be like a weekly wrap up from like a segment, Dr. Bandy Lee, especially because we have on our show, people like Sarah, people like joy who take mental health seriously. I mean, y'all know that's all Sarah talks about every conversation. She's going to take it back to mental health and joy actually does psychotherapy sessions in her home. Joy's been in therapy most of her adult life. So I felt like our show would be very receptive to a, having a mental health expert, not some armchair person, not some person, you know, but a real mental health expert who'd been in the field specializing in violence, um, coming on the show weekly. Like they used to have Joy's band books every Friday, Joy's comedy corner. You need to have a Bandy Lee segment every week to bring people up to speed. This is what this means. Because people would then not be so fearful. They wouldn't be so anxious. They wouldn't be so frustrated. They wouldn't be getting into these fights with people on social media. When you totally understand, you're totally, I'm totally wasting my time trying to argue and fight in comments with people. You're just causing your own self-stress and anxiety. Checking back. Did they respond yet? Did they respond yet? You're supposed to be working. And you on social media trying to see if the person responded yet. Y'all know how I go. So it was very disheartening for me to hear from Dr. Bandy Lee of why she has not been on our show and why she'll never be on our show. It was very, very disappointing because I thought, so then this, these types of conversations are just going to be a regular thing. The good thing for me though, that I have walked away with after studying her work, watching interviews that she gives weekly Um, is that I understand, based on her, her work, that people like Donald Trump will ultimately self-destruct. And so how that, what form that would come in, I don't know. You know, people self-destruct all the time, all the time. They smoke for years and they wind up having cancer or COPD and they wind up dying on a breathing machine or having to be on oxygen for the rest of their living days. Why? They self-destructed because of their own behaviors. A matter of fact, me and my siblings were talking about this the other day. I was telling them um, I had never been in a place where I saw so many people who smoked. Like I just assume, y'all, that with all the information you see, knowledge, knowledge, power, that's out there about how dangerous smoking is. The long-term effects of smoking. I just assumed that more, more, more people took that seriously. And so, cause they were asking me, how was your trip? You know, <clears throat> cause you know, when you go on these work trips, they're very fancy, you know? And I was like, I saw so many people smoking. I literally did not know people were still smoking to, on that level. Like I really didn't y'all. And uh, they were like, yep. 
Uh, Because, you know, we've had various family members who passed away based uh, on smoking, you know, COPD and different things like that. And so we were just talking about how, you know, see, they're, they're just thinking about now they don't see themselves 20 years down the line when they can barely breathe and they got to be on oxygen. And you got to carry an oxygen tank with you, roll it around the house with your long cord and your cannula in, in your nose, right? They don't see, they, they don't see all that. Even though there are commercials about it, there are books about it, there are advertisements about the detrimental effects of long-term, a long, excuse me, the long-term effects of smoking, even the immediate effect, people having to get part of their lung cut out and all those things. People just live for the moment, you know, they self-destruct. And so I have great confidence that at some point, <laughs> Donald Trump will self destruct based on the work that I've been following of hers. And like I said, guys, I am not exaggerating when I tell you that I am eternally grateful for this lady. She, to me, is a blessing. And I wish that I would have found her work earlier. I wish I would have found it in 2015, but I didn't. And so at the end of the day, um, the shows this week have been good. Um, now, as I agree to let you go, I want to talk about something else that happened on the show today. Y'all know Whoopi got a little bit ticked today. And yeah, I know Sonny has a legal note. I can read it. Oh. I, I, <laughs> you know, I'm like, Whoopi, did you guys see yesterday's show, Tuesday's show? Now, y'all know Whoopi says the same thing all the time. She turns to the audience. It's up to y'all. It's up to y'all. It's got so bad now on the set. When she says that, did you guys see Alyssa and, S- and S- Sonny? Alyssa's looking at Brian with that look of, here she go again. It was a very distinctive look. Sonny just looks over at Joy and starts staring at Joy. <laughs> and I'm like, whoopee. If you would just prepare for these shows better, you would have things of substance to say. You wouldn't have to keep falling back on. It's up to y'all. It's like, whoopee. We all know that. Give us something else, girl. (laughs) Okay. Um, But today you saw the show, so you know what was going on. But I'll just tell you anyway. She was reading off this list on her blue card. And it's like, but girl, that has nothing to do with what they're talking about. So that man, I forgot his name, but the floor director, he, y'all got to go to commercial break. Sonny got to read the legal note, girl. Hush and let this girl read this legal note. And so (laughs) she got upset and it's like, well, whoopee. Yeah, you know, so yeah, so there you have it. Now, I have several podcast episodes that I'm going to be making, and they're going to be coming up. We're going to talk about the table for next year. A lot of you've heard the table. We're going to have the exact same table next year, but that's not anything different than what I've been telling you guys. And for those of you going to accuse me of saying something different, you better go check. You better go check this playlist. You better go go down the list. Because I don't, I don't play around with people lying on me or putting words in my mouth. I, I don't play those types of games, even on the Internet. <laughs> so I've been saying the same thing for several years. I've been saying the same thing. Whoopi's contract ends next year. So, of course, unless she gets fired, she's going to be there next year. Joy's contract ends next year. That's next season. So, yes, of course, Joy's going to be there. And then I recently told you guys, Sonny's contract ends next year, too. So, of course, she's going to be there next year. Right? And, um, of course... You know, Sarah and Alyssa and Anna, they were, um, they have a couple of more years left on their current contract. So they're going to be, if the show is still around, they're going to be there past season 2029, excuse me, past season 28, which is next season. So there you have it. But we have a lot we're going to be talking about. But guys, I want to tell y'all something. (sighs) Our show, I don't know about y'all, but... You know, I started off this season making all these podcasts because I was just so frustrated saying to you guys, as a, as a lover of this show, I just don't know what is going to happen here because our show is just so boring. Um, when I say boring, remember what I'm talking about. I have to qualify the boring. It's just one view. Like I, I, t- I made a podcast. What was it? It's about three months ago telling you guys one of the reasons it's boring for me is because I can literally predict what each woman is going to say, no matter what they're talking about. Because, I mean, I mean, we've had this same group of women for what, seven years. And so 
there's not any nuance in their thinking on these, these particular topics. And I'm not just talking about the Trump stuff. I'm talking about abortion. I'm talking about climate change. I'm talking about health care. I'm talking about divorce. I'm talking about marriages. I'm talking about JLo, you know, whatever it is. And anytime it gets to that point, that means it's time to change the table because there's no diversity of thought. Um, and sure, we can say we're all pretty much going to sound the same on Trump. That's to be expected. All of us who are of rational and sound minds we all understand he's a threat to our democracy, literally. And so we're going to all agree on that. But I'm talking about other conversations, you know, um, these other things, you know, like Roe v. Wade and um, other things. We should have some diversity of thought on that. There are a lot of Republicans and Democrats and people all in between who are very well versed in um, intelligent men and women. And they have different opinion on these things. And to not get a difference of opinion. But I got to tell you all something that I found out, too, when I was listening to Dr. Bandy Lee. It's not just that, that Bandy Lee can't come on The View. There are other things happening at, at The View. And it's just really sad, guys, how our, what our show has become. You say, well, just turn it off. Just stop listening. I won't turn it off. And I'm not going to stop listening or watching the show. That's not what I'm going to do. Okay, so on these upcoming episodes, I'm going to be telling you guys what I found out and I'm going to be playing clips so you know it's not just something that I'm surmising. You'll hear it from the horse's mouth. But I, you know, a lot of you know, I was a big proponent of Bob Iger coming out of retirement and I was like, you know, Bob is all this and Bob is all that. (laughs) You know, maybe I was like joy. I was beguiled by his handsomeness, you know, goes back to what I was saying earlier. You know, what we'd make these decisions and determinations about people's character based on their looks and their accomplishments and what they drive and where they live. But I don't know. I don't know. You know, Bob is looking to go back into retirement. A lot of you have seen that trending story. And so he's making a lot of decisions, you know, and, um, Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that the women have known something, have known things that have not been made public yet, but we're going to talk about them. We're going to talk, and I'm going to cite my sources so that you can go look it up yourself and all those types of things. So there you have it, guys. I wanted to, like I said, make this a pretty long episode since we haven't hung out in in about a week or so, maybe two weeks or whenever. I can't remember. I think our last conversation was about Megan. Um, But anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Have a fantastic day. This is my view on the view. I'll talk to you later. Bye, guys.